morning again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Isn't that right? With all the rain is going on and the lightning and the thunder and whatnot, he still prepared us to come to service this morning. We're going to get started now. Uh, we're going to do somebody touch me. Because early this morning, about 4 o'clock, I turned over. I said, Lord God, thank you. It could have easily gone the other way overnight. So we need to give him all the praise, the most highest praise. Amen. Y'all know the song, uh, y'all can help us sing it, amen. I was singing, somebody touched me. I was singing, somebody touched me. I was singing. I know of Jesus, and I know, I know of Jesus, Lord, I know, I know of Jesus, because it said, save my soul, I was singing, but somebody touched me, giving God the praise, Somebody 
touch me when I was say somebody touch me. me and I know I know what Jesus I know I know what Jesus Lord, I know I know what Jesus because you say save my soul Friday morning, I was laying in that hospital bed. Touch me to get up, get up, go ahead, oh. Come on, brother. <laughs> Get up and help us sing this song. Can y'all do that for us? One day, one day, Jesus made a way for me. Jesus made a way. Yes, he Jesus did. Jesus made a way. Went way out on Calvary. Jesus made a way. I know he did. Jesus made a way. Set my soul free. Jesus made a way. Oh, yes, he did. Way make one, day, one, day, one, day, one 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 Went way out on Calvary. Jesus made a way. I know he did. He's a way maker. Out there where he set my soul free. Jesus made a way. Oh, yes, he did. He's a way maker. One day. 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 Jesus made a way. Yes, he did. Jesus made a way. Made a way. He's a way maker. I want to. Jesus made a way. I want to. He's a way maker. Jesus made a way. That know he made a way maker. Anybody here right now? That know he made a way maker. Anybody here that made a way? That know he made a way maker. Well, you wanna? Jesus made a way. Tell somebody. He made a way. He made a way. you, but I know he's made a way for me on many occasions. 
even when I didn't know he was doing it, he was doing it. When I didn't know he, I needed it, he was doing it, making a way. Jesus will make a way. Good morning. Good morning, St. Stephen family. To all of you out there in the virtual space and those in the sanctuary, we are so grateful that you chose today to be with St. Stephen United Methodist Church. You're here for a worship experience, not to hear the choir sing or the chorus sing, not to see who's wearing what. We're here for a worship experience. This is personal. This is between you and God. So if God has never done nothing for you, you can sit and be quiet. That's between you and God. But if he's done something for you, and if he gave you breath in your body this morning, stand on your feet, then you stand on your feet. But if you're not feeling quite as well, just clap your hands. But do something. Do something to acknowledge the goodness of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It does us no good to come to church on Sunday morning just to be seen. You could have stayed home and done that. But our God is so good. Some of us don't even realize how good he is. I'm grateful. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful. So many have gone home to be with the Lord, but he gave you another chance. This day, to get it right, to step out on a new foot with a new heart and a new mind, a chance to renew your spirit. Today, you might not be here tomorrow. You may not be here tomorrow. So if you can, get it right today. And this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. God has been good to all of us, and we're extremely glad that you chose to be with us today on, on, on this worship service experience. So we're inviting you to have a nurturing experience here. Our pastor's going to bring the word. He's going to bring the word. I said in the lead team meeting, I said, we got a guy coming all the way from Camden to close out this celebration we're having for women. And he's going to do a phenomenal job as the Lord fills his spirit. Here at St. Stephen, we still have a mission. We're a dynamic community of believers. But our primary goal is making disciples for Christ. Yes, sir. Whether that's virtually or in person, we are the disciples. Ain't no more Johns walking the earth. Ain't no more Pauls and no more. No, they're, they're no more. We are, that, we are they. We are they that used to spread the word, the gospel. We are they. So if we don't do it, it won't get done. So, I want you to keep that in mind as we go through this worship experience today. We've been asked to uh, join in on Women's History Month to worship the contributions of so many women that have gone before us and those that are here today that are still making tremendous contributions to our community and to the world. All of us have a debt of gratitude that we owe to these ladies, these women, these soldiers who have paved the way for many of us and are still paving the way. And I'm talking to all of us, all of the women, all of the women, all of the women, no matter what your field of endeavor, you deserve to be recognized. Not only this day, not only this month, this should be a daily occurrence in your life. This should be a daily occurrence in your life. I want to recognize our pastor, Reverend Kenneth Carter, our first lady, Ms. Terry Carter, all of the clergy that may be here today. We acknowledge all of you. First Lady Abrams, I thank you for allowing the men to be a part of uh, this celebration. And Pastor, thank you for so graciously allowing us to put together the outline and this service today. But we're here for one thing and one thing only, and that is the worship Christ. Let's make that 
four up front. So we welcome all of you and thank you so much for being with us today. And we hope you enjoy this worship experience. We will now have an opening hymn by our male chorus. Help me see, yeah, yeah, whoa, oh, yeah. yeah. Jesus rose, Jesus rose, Jesus rose. Oh yeah, sing it again. I know you rose. I know you rose. 
that's why I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus rose. Jesus rose. Jesus rose. Oh, yeah. Amen. Jesus rules. Jesus rules. We'll now have our prayer by our very own Reverend Carter. Brother Pepper, but I'm going to yield to my good friend Rex Larkin. He desires to pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. It's been a while since I've been up here, but I asked the pastor, I said, Pastor, let me do the prayer this morning. Yes, Need to get back into it, amen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's go to the throne. Yes. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name that your will be done. Father God, we come this morning as humble as we know how. Yes, we come in, Father God, tell them thank you. Tell them you thank you, Father God, for the early rising this morning. Yes, Lord God, so many wish they could wake up this morning, but God, you called them on home. But oh, Heavenly Father, you kept us here. And just for that, we want to say thank you. Thank you. And there's nothing that we've done so good for to keep us here. But God, we want to say thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues right now, we could not thank you enough. Because you have been so good to us. Lord God, I ask you to bless those who's under the sound of my voice this morning. Bless those who have the Father who are in the hospitals. Convalescent home, jail houses, let them know, Father God, that you are the way, the truth, and the light. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Father God, we can't do nothing without you. We're not going to ask you to come into the midst this morning, oh, Heavenly Father, but we know you're already here. Yes. Yes. You're already here. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for the women of the church. Uh, God, we, we couldn't do nothing without them. Yes. We wouldn't even be here without them. For I ask, you, I ask that you bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice yes. right now. Bless our male chords as we come to sing your song, The Zion. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, we're not here for no form of fashion. We came to give you the utmost, the highest praise. Yes, and that's hallelujah. Bless our musicians this morning. Bless our pastor, Father God. Him and his family. Bless him as he brings the word. Oh God, I just want you to thank you. Bless our kids and our grandkids, Father God. They travel up and down these dangerous highways. We ask that you put that fence around them. Yes, Keep them away from harm or danger. Uh, bless our, our, our leaders this morning, Father God. Then they may come, they may come on one accord sooner or later. Yes, sir. But Father God, we realize that you're in control. Yes, sir. So we thank you right now. Thank you. Not for a long prayer. But a prayer for the Lord is part of our hearts. In your son Jesus Christ's name. In your son Jesus' name. Oh, Heavenly Father, in your son Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. We now have a scripture reading.
by Brother Marcus Jarvis, and that'll be followed by a, another selection from the male chorus. Good morning, everybody. I'll be reading Colossians 1, verses 12 through 30. Let me know when y'all ready. Y'all ready? All right, so, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has his holy people in the kingdom of light, for he has rescued us from the do dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom he, we have redemption and for forgiveness of sins. The son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. With the thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning of the firstborn and the, among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you his Holy Spirit, well, holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed is to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in regard to Christ's uh, afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become his servant by the commission of God, gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed in the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among all the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. For the, for the word of God, for the people of God. All right. One correction. We're going to. Hold this song down after the announcements. That's what I'm told. All right. Um, before we do the announcements, I, I want to really acknowledge the women um, and, and, and give a little history on what Women's Celebration and Women's History Month is all about. So if you would bear with me just a second. Uh, according to the National Women's History Alliance, Women's History Month is a celebration of women's contributions to history, culture, and society, and has been observed annually in the month of March since 1987. This month is dedicated to reflect on the often overlooked contributions of women, such as Sojourner Truth and Rosa Parks, all of their contributions to the history of the United States since its founding. Now this, this month, the celebration of women, uh, the, the, the theme for the History Month is celebrating women who tells our stories. Celebrating women who tells our stories. Celebrating Women History Month grew out of a single week-long celebration and, and this started back in 1978 and it was organized by the school district out in California. A few years later the idea took hold in the communities and school districts and uh, organizations all across this country. And finally, in 1980, President Jimmy Carter, uh, he issued a, pres a first presidential proclamation declaring the week, uh, March the 8th, as National Women's History Week. And that has now since expanded into an entire month, which took six years later 
uh, but a petition was filed by Congress, and now it is uh, Women's History Month. So internationally, we celebrate this day uh, on March 8th, start back in 1911. Um, but the United Nations has sponsored International Women's Day since 1975, and when adopting this resolution of the observance of this International Women's Day, the United Nations General Assembly cited the following reasons. And this is important, to recognize the fact that securing peace and social progress and the full enjoyment of human rights and fundamental freedoms require the active participation, equality, and development of women. And to acknowledge the contribution of women to the strengthening of international peace and security. So this is why the, this day is so important. But not only on an international and a national level, it's more important in this church because a lot of, uh, of the four founding mothers, that's what I'm gonna call them, the founding mothers, and I, like I tell you all the time when I get up here, I always, I can see them over there right now. Wow. Sitting right over here where Pastor Carter is. Uh, Ms. Marlene Rickenbacker, Ms. Alberta Sistrum, uh, Ms. Lucille Hampton, Ms. Singletary, Ms. Odell Gladney, Ms. Elvira Sistrum, Ms. Marilyn Sistrum. All of these names, I, I can see these faces over here as I stand here, because they were here when I was growing up. And so, ladies, I say that to say this, you, right here, play such an important role in our next generation. Your contributions are immeasurable, and it doesn't have to be that you found a cure for cancer. It can just be a simple, son, you gonna make it, that gives that child a boost that he needs to be who he's gonna be. So. I thank all of you for everything you do and I ask that you continue to do it because we have many generations to come that need your motherly push, that needs your, the push of a woman, the nurturing comfort, because we men sometimes don't get it right. We sometimes a little too rough around the edges. And I don't fault them for that. I can't fault them for that. We need both sides, it gotta be a balance. We need tough love and then we need somebody to come and cuddle somebody. So we need y'all to continue to do what you do to make us successful. Not only men, uh, not only the, the, the children and the next generation, but us as men. And so now, with that being said, we will have our announcements by Brother Nolton Green, followed by tithes and offering by Reverend Carter, who will assume the program from that point. Good morning. Good morning. I keep telling them, give me an open mic if you want. One of these days, I'm going to break out. <laughs> yeah, because um, Sister Lady Britt and I, we're going to sing a duet. But anyway, <laughs> I want to say happy Women's Month to my wife and all the women. Remember, we just sung Jesus Will Make a Way. Remember, ladies, you make a difference, a profound difference in everybody's lives. 24-7-365. Okay. Good morning. Please tag, like, or share our worship service this morning. Next Gen 2 would like to thank everyone who made their first, first outreach project a success. The canned goods are, and other items will be delivered to CCMO as soon as possible. If you are able to assist with ass assisting them after church, please do. Thank you in advance. April is National Health Month. More information will be shared next Sunday. The, the theme is Better Health Through Better Understanding. And we need to have better understanding about health. Saturday, April 1st and April 8th from 10 to 12 noon will be confirmation classes for youth 12 and above and new members. Please see Sister Rachel Sistrunk or First Lady Carter to sign up before next Saturday. The Saint newsletter will be available on next Sunday, April the 2nd, after worship services. Also, deadline for articles for the April newsletter will be Thursday, April 13th. Articles are to be submitted for activities and programs for the month of March. Articles must be 500 words or less and submitted to Ms. Latrina Holmes or Reverend Shirley Nichols. Deadline will be ahead to. Since Stephen family, we are seeking a sexton for third and fourth Sundays. Special occasions are included. Please contact Sister Fridia Smith 
chairperson of SPRC if you're interested. Our goal is in-house, but outside application, applicants will be accepted. Ms. Denise Kennelly, part of our church family, is re relocating. She's moving. She has a two-day yard sale. She is located at 12, 1720 Church Hill Road, Orangeburg. The state dates are Friday, March the 31st, 2023, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Saturday, April 1st, 2023, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Okay. Ten percent of her, proce her proceeds will be earmarked for since giving. Happy birthday to all born in the month of March. Happy 47th anniversary to Mr. and Mrs. Larry and Janice Harris. <laughs> they will be celebrating tomorrow, March 27th. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Please continue to pray for our sick and shedding members as well as for our community. Continue prayers for Mrs. Rachel Sistrom and Mrs. Shirley Wright. Both were hospitalized but our home recuperating. Also pray for Mr. Michael Felder, who is recuperating after surgery. Thank you. That's any other announcements. Thank you. Now we will have our time where everybody can participate. Tithes and Offerings by Reverend Carter. Okay, thank you. Brother Pepper, and thank you, uh, Mr. Knowlton, for the announcements. And let me uh, add to our announcements. Um, uh, we, we're planning a Holy Week service uh, on that Wednesday of that week. Uh, I think that may be April 5th or something. Uh, but it's a Wednesday of the Holy Week. We're going to have services. I think we're going to start at 6.30, but we, we'll announce that. Um, uh, We'll know more about that time. Let's just say 6.30. Uh, I, too, want to uh, com uh, commend the women for this uh, wonderful celebration of this month and to all women everywhere how significant you are to us, to, to, uh, to, um, to all of God's creation, you are significant in so many ways, and I don't have time to go through all of those ways that you have been and still are significant to um, God's creation, particularly to men. The Bible said that uh, women are have been created to be help mates or meat uh, for, for the men. Now, I, I want to say what I want to say, but I better not say what I want to say, but I, I am going to say that um, we are incomplete, men are incomplete without women. Men are dense thinkers. They, we are dense. But women are very detailed. Uh, we see the whole forest, but the women see the trees. Uh -huh. And uh, they're very detailed. A woman can know, they know exactly what colors and, and shoes and everything other women have on. They can, they'll ask you when you get home, did you see our sister? So she had on that purple dress. You said, uh, the men will say, I ain't see no woman with no purple dress. <laughs> no, we don't think like that. <laughs> yeah, we just look at. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble in a minute. Then. <laughs> we just look at faces and legs. See there? <laughs> we we are men. Are, I'm I'm going to get past this, but we are men are concrete thinkers and women are clear thinkers. And let me finish this, that uh, men are nearsighted about things. 
and women are farsighted. It, it, listen, y'all know this, men. Um, they are already thinking next week. And we thinking about yesterday. <laughs> and it, to the glory of God, God made men kind of wild, which is a credit to us because we, are, we take our wildness and uh, use it for our defense and to be creative and innovative and to go search and look and find out things and drag the deer home. You know, we go, we are, we, we can be slayers of anything, men can. But when we come home, women tame us. We are tamed by women, amen. So God bless you women for being who you are. We need you to keep us to be men, amen. Uh, congratulations to this brother and this sister to uh, 47 years. That's a, that's a long time to be married, God bless you. Janice and you know, Larry, God bless y'all, God bless y'all. Amen, 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 and I want to um, there is a couple that have been married one weekend, and that's Desi and Valerie. Y'all stand up. They are, they are a, a married couple now, and they've only been together a few days. <laughs> so pray for them, and... Uh, Continue to pray for the Harrisons and, uh, and all of God's people. Amen, 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 amen. We're down to our tithe and offering. I want to read out of 1 Chronicles chapter 29, and I want, to, I want to keep saying I read out the Bible. It's not what Carter want or the Finance Committee want. It's the Lord. Think about that. And uh, it's uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 9. It says, then the people rejoiced. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Rejoice for that they offered willingly because with perfect heart, they offered willingly to the Lord. That's 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 9. And then verse 12 says, both uh, riches, this is the praise from David to the Lord, both riches and honor comes of thee, and thou reignest over all. And, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. God can provide what we need in life. He's able to do that. He can supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. If you have your envelope and if you don't have one, it's okay. You have already given. God knows it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to give to you and to your kingdom and all that you have provided and supplied for us, Lord. We, we, we thank you, Lord, for providing for us day after day after day, night after night. We thank you. We pray now that you receive what we're offering or giving back to you. It is in Jesus' name that we do this. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have this dynamic, fantastic, amazing, wonderful, fascinating, spiritual male course come back. Talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. Let me tell you, He's a friend of. 
see you. He's a friend of mine. Thank you, brothers. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. All right, y'all got to be bouncing. Yep. Lord have mercy. Thank y'all. Thank you, musicians. All you, the brothers. Amen. Thank you for singing like that. Amen. Y'all got one or two more now. I'm going to call on you in a minute. Amen. And uh, finish finish this thing up, you know. Yeah, you got to, you know, went back in the day when you, you couldn't stop in the middle of the cotton field. You had to finish that row. Y'all got to finish that row. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, uh, starting at verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 17. Out of the King James Version, it says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth not, uh, walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of, of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The word of God for God's people. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. We want to uh, use for a subject uh, this morning um, the Savior's salvation is more than a sanctuary salvation. The Savior's salvation is more than a sanctuary salvation. A Savior's salvation is more than, more worth than, more valuable than, more meaningful, more effective, more productive than a sanctuary salvation. It appears that, uh, that after every generation, the church changes. And the changes are not always for the better. Yeah. Nevertheless, the church still has the residue uh, of good and still has the power of the Lord in it. Amen. The first century church joy was about the good news. And the good news was that a man named Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. And they had proof of that. Praise God. And so the first century church had not only proof that there was a man who lived and died and rose again, but they also had proof of love among each other and that they shared all things because of this good news. They had a confession, one confession. Now, that one confession was that the fact that Jesus was Lord. It is still the oldest and the ancient confession of the church. If one cannot confess that Jesus is Lord, then the Spirit, Holy Spirit is not working with the individual. Amen. And so if you confess that Jesus is Lord, it is done by the power of the Lord that has invaded your life. Amen. Amen. And so... The first century church was not double-minded or they had, did not have double standard about themselves. They were not confused about their belief. 
Amen. They operated in one power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they used one name. And that name, of course, is Jesus. And, and their focus, focus was on him, and which was the church. Their minds were on eternal life, and they, they had plenty of Jesus and not too much church. <laughs> uh, today, the, the 21st century church, perhaps, underscore perhaps, have too much church and not enough Christ. Yeah, it, it appears that we have lost some of our focus, some of our joy, some of our confessions. It seems that we have lost some power along the way being the church, praise God. And it appears that we produce perhaps more bad news or not so much good news out of the church. Amen. It appears that believers, in the generality of the speaking of it, is that we seem more divided than unified. And denominations, amen, think some think that they're better than the other, whatever, however, whatever denomination, we have a slew of them. And it appears that our confessions are more attuned to social rhetoric than about spiritual reality. Amen. In other words, we listen too much of what they say than what he said. Amen. I'm going to take my time. You know, I took my watch out of me. And uh, it, it appears that we are more interested in uh, our own saving plan. Oh, Lord. We, we, we save resources and rather than save souls. Amen. We, we are saving the wrong thing. Uh, it, it appears that we, we have too much church and not enough Christ. The Bible lets us know that Jesus is the head of the church and he's the founder. He's the chief cornerstone of the church. And the first century church, they exalted Jesus. Amen. Praise God. They evangelized to the lost people. They, they didn't keep talking to the saved people. They went and talked to the lost people. We love to talk. We love to talk to ourselves. The uh, first century church, they edified each other. They taught each other, shared each uh, to each other the good news, and then they expressed their love and service to the community. They helped other people. Vance Hevner, Hevner a, a renowned twentieth century revivalist. Uh, a, a profound preacher said these words. He says, much of the professing church has gone in for theatrics, running a showboat instead of a lifeboat, staging a performance instead of living an experience, and having a form of godliness without the power thereof. Vance Havner, he was a renowned revivalist. He hit it right on the head. Amen. Theatrics, showboat, performances, and doing it all without the power of God. In essence, uh, there's too much church and not enough Christ. It's a, it's a, a sanctuary salvation. Mm -hmm. This is the seriousness of Paul's message to the Ephesian church. He, he, his alarming statement, but you have not so learned Christ, revealed that they, they, were being, they were being the church without Christ. Y'all better play some music. They quiet up in here now. <laughs> Amen. This is a message for the generality of the church, okay? St. Stephen is included. Amen. 
In other words, Paul was saying to them, you have learned church, but not Christ. Unfortunately, it appears that we are learning about the complications and the complexities of the church rather than the compassion of Christ. Amen. We make church hard. Amen. Church wasn't hard. Amen. It looked like the, the older the, uh, the church gets, the seems the harder it gets. We make church complex, problematic. Amen. We get stuck like Chuck in stuff. Amen. We need not be in. Amen. The Apostle Paul in these scriptures conveyed to the Ephesians church uh, a, a few things uh, that I'd like to share or believe that he expounded upon, and I, I'm going to derive off of, of some of what Paul's principal teaching or in this letter uh, was about. And so the first thing I want to uh, let us know that, you know, the difference between a, a savior salvation and sanctuary salvation is a few things. First, uh, there's, there's too much world and not enough word. See, in, in, in the sanctuary church, there's too much world in it. In, 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 a, in a sanctuary salvation, it's too much world in it and not enough word. We, we, we think that we can think the church without the word. We, we think we can do the church without doing the word. Paul said to the Ephesians church, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth not uh, walk not as other Gentiles. And Paul addressed the Gentiles because God sent him, Jesus sent him to the Gentiles because the Jews had Peter. The Gentiles had nobody except for Jesus and Paul. And Paul was sent by Jesus to the Gentiles to tell the Gentiles that grace is on the way. Amen. And so he says, don't walk like other Gentiles, people who don't know the Lord. You ought to walk like you know Christ. He says, don't walk in the vanity. He said, they walk in the vanity of their mind. In other words, they got too much world in them. And Paul was saying to the Ephesians church, you ought to not have all this worldliness in you. You ought to have some word up in you. Gentiles who walked in the vanity of their minds were walking in the worldliness of themselves. Amen. They were thinking more by the world than the word. In other words, uh, Paul was saying, don't you have too much world in you and not enough word? You do your own assessment, I mean, of your own self. The Bible says that all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 1 John 2 and 16, and when the church has too much world in it, the church becomes what we want it to be, not what Christ wants it to be. Or the fact that he died for the church to be a powerful mechanism on earth to exalt him, to talk about him. Amen. And when the world comes into the church, when the world comes into the church, it becomes a, a sanctuary salvation for itself only, not for the world. When the world comes into the church, rebellion comes with it. When the world comes into the church, stubbornness comes with it. Dissensions comes with it. Division comes with it. Pride comes with it. Self-will comes with it. Self-promotion comes with it. Self-glory comes with it. Self-satisfaction comes with it. When, when the world comes, we have to into the church... We, we have to satisfy the people more than we satisfy the Lord. Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity, and that word enmity means enemy with God, and whosoever therefore be, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. James chapter 4, verse 4. The 21st century church uh, wants to look religious. And act like the world. 
Uh -huh. You got your keys, uh, Carter. <laughs> Hunt them keys, gal. Yeah. Jesus said to uh, the scribes and Pharisees a few things about having a religious look, but don't know that they're lost. Sometimes you can look religious and be lost. This Paul message is for the whole entirety of the church. I'm talking about, I ain't just for St. Stephen, it's for the entirety of the church. For every church, praise God. Amen. And so he said for you, he said to the Pharisees, you make clean the outside of the cup. You look good on the outside in the platter, but within, you know, he's, you're full of extortion and excess. Jesus says, clean the inside that the outside may be clean. In other words, don't perpetrate a fraud on the outside while on the inside, your, your dishes need washing. Amen. Praise God. And y'all know and I know that if, if you have a, a savior's salvation, uh, the, the cleanup starts on the inside of you. Uh, the Lord will come in and, and he will begin to sweep clean uh, the dirtiness of ourselves. Anybody been dirty? Man? Anybody been unclean? And I'm glad that the Lord will come in. He'll come in and clean up. Well, we messed up. Amen. He, he comes in. There, there's a savior salvation that, that comes with a change. Amen. And so uh, the church and the church people, uh, we need not look good on the outside. It's the inside that counts to God. Amen. God looks not on the outer appearance, but he looks in at the heart. Uh, greater is he that is in you. He's got to be in you. Uh, the Savior's salvation is inward. Sa uh, sanctuary salvation is for outwardness. Amen. There ain't no need for us to be, you know, I, I don't know, but you, many of us have been living trying to prove who we are to other people. You had to prove you saved your folk. You ever been around people who you got to prove you, you know, you saved the folk. Praise God. Amen. You got to prove to them, like the Pharisees wanted Jesus to prove to them who he was. But if you got the Holy Ghost on the inside, the greater in, on the inside, if you got something working on the inside, eventually it'll show up on the outside. I ain't got to keep telling you that I'm saved. Praise God. Just try me. You'll see after a while what the Lord has done. Praise God. I'm, I don't have to prove myself. And too many of us are trying to prove our salvation. You don't have to prove it. Live it. Uh, Jesus described Pharisees as white sepulchers, and indeed they appear beautiful outward, but they are full of dead men's bones. See, you, you better not mess with Jesus, because Jesus will tell you just like it is. That's what he did with the Pharisees. When religious folk, amen, keep nagging at you, trying to prove, want you to prove who you are, Amen. Uh, you, you ought to be able to tell them something. You, you ought to tell them something. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, don't have too much world in you. You, you, don't have, you can't bring the world in the church. Where would the worldly people come if they could? Do you think they're coming to the world in the church? Man, if, if you know, worldly people coming in, we talking about the roof. The roof is on fire. Hmm? 
can't. You, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't mean any harm. I'm just being real. Praise God, I'm just being real. Come on now. I used to go out and, uh, and uh, can I be real, y'all? I'm going to be real anyhow. I'm going to be real anyhow. I used to go out and, uh, you know, I wasn't married. Now, let me put that out there first. When I went to parties, boy, I was, you know, I was checking out them babies, boy. Oh, and I dressed short, boy. Woo! You know, and, uh, you know we, see, they start partying by 9, 9, 10 o'clock. I don't get there by 11. Where the party at, Jack? See? Uh, now, I say that to say that. Say this, you know. Look, you come into the house of the Lord. Your dress shouldn't be. I ain't, I ain't gonna say no more. I'm gonna just leave that right there. Praise God. Amen. Don't bring the world into the church. Amen. Paul was saying to the Ephesians, don't, don't have too much world in your mind. And not practice the word. The word. The word is a change. The second thing is too much. The sanctuary salvation is too much blindness and not enough belief. Mm -hmm. Sanctuary salvation is too much blindness and not enough belief. The Apostle Paul encouraged the Ephesians church not to be like other Gentiles having the understanding, their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. A blind heart is a dark heart, absence of the light of God. A, a blind heart is a deceitful heart, a hateful heart, an unforgiving heart, uh, an immoral heart. Amen. Praise God. A blind heart don't believe all of the word. They believe some of it. They don't believe all the word of God. Amen. A blind heart does not understand the spiritual things of God. It's foolishness to blind hearts. You ought to not act like that, they say. Make it too much noise and all of that. But praise God, if you, if you have not been through some stuff, you don't understand people's praise and relief. When they come to church, I ain't coming to church to be quiet. The Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I ain't coming to be cute. Good God Almighty, I'm, I come to worship the Lord, amen. I come to do like David. I come to do a David dance up in here. I ain't come, praise God, for you. I come for God. I come to worship him because of what he has done all week long. Praise God. And so you, you, you know, you know, people don't, they don't know what you go through. And so they think you ought to act like they want you to act. Now, I, I know, I know. There's order in the church. Don't get me wrong. There's order in the church. And, um, but you got to believe the word of God. And you got to let go and let God have his way. Apostle Paul said to them about their blindness, he said, but you have not so learned Christ. You haven't studied him. Amen. You have not studied Jesus. You, you're spending too much time on yourselves, what you want, how you want it. You, you're spending too much time fussing Amen. Instead of developing your faith, praise God. You, you're spending too much time, amen, on how you look. To other people. It's the sanctuary salvation. A sanctuary salvation, praise God, is only concerned with what he is right now. Amen. Amen. Paul was saying, you have not so learned Christ. You, you know too much church and not enough Jesus. Uh, the, the Ephesians church had subsided in its social surroundings. They were, they were rich 
from heaven. But they were acting poor in society. You, you rich. St. Stephen, I'm going to deal, deal with St. Stephen. You rich. But you're acting poor. Well, what do you mean, Reverend? I ain't got time. To tell you. Just think about it. You're too rich to act poor. God has provided for us his heavenly bank. Praise God. And, and he has showered us with all kinds of blessings. And we want to act stingy and poor and broke among our own selves. Paul is saying, praise God, stop acting poor with your rich self. I wish I had time to say what I need to say. Amen. And started up. Uh, perhaps the Ephesians church were more concerned about their personal gain and rather than their personal praise. You know, we, we're more in tune to ourselves more than, what does, what, what does Jesus want out of his church? And I don't care what church you're in. If you declare that Jesus Christ is Lord in your life, praise God, as a church, he ought to be the center of attention. What do you think Jesus want out of your church? Amen. Perhaps the Ephesians church was, they were uh, too dissolved and, and involved in pragmatic programs that sometimes eliminate the purpose of the church. And perhaps they had too much, too much, uh, uh, I, want a, I want the church to go my way. Uh, then Christ's way. You might need to go get my helmet at my office. <laughs> Let me stop right here now. I'm going to stop right here and be real now. Ain't no need for me to come down here and pastor you or be the pastor and don't tell the truth. I'm just, uh, it's just it ain't if for every, every church, but St. Stephen included. Okay, so that's me. Amen. Praise God. I can go back home, and I enjoy being around 1295 Spring Hill Road. <laughs> Perhaps the Ephesians church, praise God, uh, they had a I, let's be us mindset. When the, when the disciples came to Jesus about the Pharisees, he, he told them, leave them alone now. They'd be blind guys of the blind. I want to tell you something, Matthew chapter 15 and 14. Sometimes if, if you let your blindness lead you, God will lead you. Some of us, want to, and I say us as in the church, but St. Steve is in included. Some of us are too blind to see where God is leading us. And we don't want to go. Amen. When you have a Savior salvation, praise God, it's all about what God wants and how we get to where God wants us to get to. And I ain't talking about cross the road. Forget that for now. We need Jesus in here. There ain't no need going nowhere until you get the Savior's salvation operating. Amen. Last thing I want to say is too much uh, this sanctuary church can be too much of self and not enough to save you. Too much of self. Paul says you have not so learned Christ. That means that they were not focusing on Jesus. They were focusing on themselves. There's a spiritual song that says you know uh, we, we don't sing it no more and this is uh, it asks the question do you know do you know the man? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? Praise God. 
There were, there were some people that wanted to come see Jesus. They came from afar in the Bible. They came from, from, from afar, and they said, when they came, they says, we, we would see Jesus in the Bible. In other words, we want to see Jesus. People come to church, they want to see Jesus. Amen. They, they want to see Jesus up in here. Amen. They want to see Jesus in use. A Savior's salvation, praise God, is, does not end at the benediction. But a sanctuary salvation ends at the benediction. Amen. When I get through with church, when some get through with church, amen, that's it. Praise God. But a Savior's salvation, praise God, his or her work begins after the benediction. Praise God. Uh, it's a work in salvation that does not have any benediction to it. You, you can't benedict yourself out of salvation. It, it, there's no benediction for that, praise God. It's an eternal thing, amen. You and I have eternal life in us. It cannot be benedicted. Praise God. And so you cannot shut down your salvation after the benediction. If you are, you are religious. If church is over when you leave, you ain't never had church. Uh, you, you have not so learned Christ. Amen. Too, too many in the church don't know the man from Galilee. Amen. Jesus asked the disciples, uh, who do men say that I am? And they told him, some say you Elijah, some say you this one, some say you that one. Then, this, then he says, but who do you? You. He, he wanted them to know him. He wants the church to know him. Amen. Never mind, you know, Buck now. <laughs> and Bobby, all of them, you know, Julie and Jeanette now. Forget them. Never mind Kenneth and Terry. Do you know Jesus? I, I know you, you know the I know you know the name, but do you know what's in the name? I, I know you know the name, but do you know the power behind that name? I know you know the name. Do you know that name makes devils tremble? I know you know the name that the angels bow. Amen. I you know the name, but do you know, praise God, that the devil runs from that name? You gotta know. You gotta know the man. Do you know the man? Do you know the man? Uh, uh, we sometimes the church, in the generality of itself, know the religious protocols. Amen. About the church, too many know about, you know, their faith operations, rather than the divine will of God. Too many know about the protocols of committee. Amen. More than the power of Christ in the church. Too many know about the church calendar. Then the compassionate care of Christ. Too, it's, it's, it's too much of self and not enough saving. Let me park right here and um, I'm going to finish in a minute, uh, y'all. Amen. I got a little phrase for you, man. Put some pep on it. Buddy. Amen. Uh, let, me, let me say uh, that I, I always fill up with gas before I come here, Brother Sister. So if she cranked that truck up, I don't want to run out of gas going down that road from y'all. But I want to tell you, I ain't running. How did the church in and of itself became more important than the one who built the church? I want you to think, think big. Just don't think about St. Stephen, think big. How did the church become more important than the one who built the church? Jesus says, upon this rock I will build, I will build, I will build not denominations. I, I will build not religions. 
I will build my church, Matthew 16 and 18. It cannot be too much church and not enough Christ. That doesn't mean we don't deal with Christ, we don't praise the Lord, we don't die. I'm talking about St. Stephen now. That, that ain't got nothing to do with it. It has to be in your heart daily. Amen. Praise God. Christ must be first. The church is the body of Christ, and Christ is the head of the church, and therefore the church is subject to, unto Christ. Ephesians 5 and 20, it cannot be too much church and not enough Christ. The church needs a Savior again. A sanctuary, now, now let me say this, and I'm going, yeah, I didn't preach enough. I, I'm, I'm going to go. Listen, a Savior salvation is about the saving of the soul. A sanctuary salvation is about the saving of the church building. The, sa the Savior's salvation is about redemption of the lost people. And the sanctuary salvation is about the removal of the unwanted people. I want you to think generally now. And sometimes we wonder why, you know, the, the low people, the low class people, the this, that, and the other people, the people who've been counted out, the people who live on the street corner, the people who live under the bridge, and whatever, whatever, don't come to church because we... We, we, we tough, because we want them to look like us. Amen. Redemption is to everybody, even uh, particularly the lost people. That's how you got it. That's how I got it. Amen. Somebody offered us redemption in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It, it is not, come unto me all that are laboring. All, all means all that are laboring are heavy laden. Praise God. Amen. The sanctuary, the, the sanctuary of salvation, amen, we, 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 we bar, you know, you got to go. Amen. The Savior's salvation is about the repentance of sin. And, you know, people don't repent no more. Because the sanctuary of salvation don't ask for it. We don't want to talk about it because there ain't nobody sinning no more. I know I'm going over my time. Nobody sinning no more. We used to sin. Amen. We used to sin, I said, and many of us used to enjoy sinning. Amen. See, see, church people don't. Church people need to be real. How folk can't get saved? You know what? You you can't you can't talk to me. Praise God if you've been you you ain't never had nothing wrong with you. You ain't never had nothing wrong with you. You ain't never went through nothing, now, child. I ain't never had no cones on my toes. Man. <laughs> yes, it is. Take your shoes off. I almost. <laughs> hey, something is wrong, has been wrong, is wrong with us. Amen. So the Savior's salvation is about repentance. Sanctuary salvation is, is about repeating the sin in service. It's tough. I know it, it's tough, but I love you. I love you like that. If I didn't love you, you know, man, I'd have, oh, Lord. Salvation. Sanctuary salvation, uh, you know, is about repeat. We do the same thing over and over again with no revelation, no illumination. And but we want new things from God. You can't get no new things. You ain't the, the Savior's salvation is about the forgiveness of sin. Jesus forgives us of our sin. And don't let nobody fool you. Every now and then the devil, you know, would talk sin back into you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I know it's time to go. Y'all ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> and it's raining. Let's, let, can I preach to you? Rain, stop. <laughs> let, let me preach to you the rain, stop. I'm, you won't walk out here dry today. Amen. The devil will talk sin right back in you if you listen. Amen. And he will remind you of how awful you've been. And then he'll, he'll take you back to words you've said. 
And I'm talking about 20, 30 years ago. He, he, then he'll bring it right on up to contemporary. Remember, remember, remember. Remember your old stupid self. The devil will call you that. The devil will call you stupid. Now, watch how deviant he is. I, I, I know I'm taking up your time. He dirty enough to in, in, infiltrate your mind and make you think stupid. Then, I was stupid. I ain't call you stupid. Our stupid self will act on the thinking. And then when the thinking is done, he stands back and says, your stupid self. He reminds us of our past mistakes and errors. And, and we sitting up there wishing, man, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have. I said, uh, you know, you told my son 10 years ago, I, I shouldn't have. You can't change. Somebody need to tell that, that governor. You can't change the past. You can't get rid of the past, amen. You, you know, only God, particularly for sinners, I mean, for Christians, God get rid of your past. All right? Amen. But we have lived it. And the devil wants to remind us of it. Sanctuary salvation is, Jesus forgives us. But sanctuary salvation has sometimes an unforgiving spirit. Mm -hmm. a, a, a savior's salvation is about eternal life, and a sanctuary salvation is about one or two hours on Sunday. Yeah. I'm almost finished. Don't go nowhere. The sanctuary uh, salvation cannot save you. You can't get saved by the church. The church can't save you. See, we, we don't tell people that. These people, I come to church. I go to church. I used to go to church, too. I used to go to church. Amen. I still go, but I see my it, things change. So I used to go to church just to say I've been to church. Then I go to my other church. See, a lot of us, when, we, when church over, this used to be now. I know y'all ain't doing this now. When, when church over, we used to go to the other church. See, we used to call it a juke joint. Y'all done got nervous ain't be here. But that ain't, you know, that's, that's not why, I mean, church never changed me. I'm going to be real about it. Church don't change you. Praise God. The Savior's salvation changes you. Praise God. Church cannot change you. Only the Savior can. If the Savior is not in the sanctuary, then the sanctuary is sanctimonious. I'm almost finished. Just hang in a minute. Sanctimonious is pretending to be morally and spiritually superior. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to read that again now. If the Savior is not in the sanctuary, the sanctuary is sanctimonious. And yeah, thank you, Lord. It, it rained. We... we yeah, that means I got 20 more minutes, amen. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm, I'm going to let y'all out and go get wet, amen. Um, the this, this sanctuary salvation must have the Savior's salvation as prime principle practice. I'm going to say it again now. Ain't no hollering today. The, the, the sanctuary salvation... If, if it's going to be real, it must have the Savior's salvation as the prime principle practice of itself. The Savior's salvation will cause the elimination of sanctuary salvation. It will no longer be about us. 
but it'll be about the Lord. Everything we do, Paul says, is no longer I that live, but Christ that this is the Savior's salvation. Christ that lives in me. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all people unto me. The sanctuary of salvation must be, must it must relinquish itself to the Savior's salvation. It must be about Jesus. The best help we can uh, uh, give to people is, and the best hope we can give to people is the Savior's salvation. Amen. Jesus came to do several things, and, and he, he came to deliver, set free, open blinded eyes, liberate us from stuff. He came to be the light of the world, the bread of life, the gate, the door, the sheep. The shepherd, uh, he, be, he came to be all that, the Lamb of God. He's the great sacrifice, praise God, he's all that. He's the light of the world. He is the Savior. Salvation is only in him, not just in a temple. When, uh, when, when Israel came uh, before the Lord constantly, you find this in Isaiah chapter 1. When they came before the Lord, they brought their gifts, and they brought this, and they brought their incense, and they brought that, and they brought this, and they you know, kept coming to the temple like that, kept coming to the temple. And the Lord says, stop coming here like this. He says, stop bringing me your vain oblation. He says, they stink to me. Instead of they bringing good order, he says, your stuff stinking. Yes, stop, he says, praise God. He says, you know, in other words, your, your coming to me was out of religion. That's right. Jesus said it this way out of Isaiah, and he said it, he repeated what Isaiah said. He says, uh, how um, right was Isaiah? He says, these people come to me, um, they're, they're, they come to me uh, with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. He was saying uh, that they had sanctuary salvation. I'm yours, God, while I'm in here. God is saying, don't, don't be doing that. So in the contemporary, what are we bringing to God that God is saying, hmm, Ooh, what kind of service was that? <laughs> what, did you, what did you offer up to me? Y'all got something? I'm, I'm going to leave that. Hey, don't offer nothing that God don't want. Amen. <laughs>
what you did You wouldn't let me a helping hand No, no, no This dare you scandalized my name Yes, you did All over the land I'ma tell y'all today If you were willing To lend me a helping hand Be just like pouring water salvation takes place. Amen. We invite you to be a part of this church today. Anybody want to get saved today? You're not saved. You have not confessed the Lord with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. This is a good day to do that. Jesus said, if you are ashamed to own me before people, I will be ashamed to own you before my Father, which is in heaven. It's all about Jesus, isn't it? Amen. So if anybody have any need, any prayer, concerns at this time, we're going to ask for names. Any prayer, concerns? Yes, sir. Say it again. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Her father, her father is to the hospital lab. Thank you. 
and and April. I need the old. I need the old. Yeah. Every hour. I need the Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to, oh, hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. I need the old. I need anybody need it. I know you need. Yeah. Every hour I need you. Oh, bless. Father, we just come because we need thee every hour of the day. Oh God, we need thee. We come, we come helpless. Father, we come sometimes hopeless. We come with our hurts. We come with our pains. We, we come with our agonies and with our frustrations. We, we come with our worries. We come with our cares and our concerns that goes on in our lives. We, we come bringing unto you our sicknesses, our diseases. We come, we bring our troubles to you today. For you said in your words that we can cast all of our cares upon you, for you care for us. You, you told us in your words to take your burdens to the Lord. God, we brought our burdens to you today. Some of the burdens have gotten heavy, too heavy to carry. And so we bring them to cast them on you today. Somebody, in fact, everybody in needs a touch from you today needs your help today we need you to be the lifter of our burdens the lifter of our heads we need you to be the healer today we need you to get rid of the diseases that are trying to kill us god in the name of jesus be god today be who you said you are. You said, I'm the Lord thy God who heals you of your sicknesses and diseases. You, you're the one to say, is anything too hard? Hallelujah, God. We know that we know that we know there's nothing too hard for you. You can heal and help and cure anything. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for miracles. You are still a miracle working God. You cannot decrease in yourself. Everything you've been, you're still being. Everything you've done, you still can do. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we 
we ask for your presence in our lives today we pray for purge and power that will work in us to activate in us God purge us of our own selves purge us of our self-righteousness purge us of our self-promotions purge us God of our self-wills We need thee. We need thee right now. Somebody, Lord, is calling on your name. Hallelujah, God. We're glad that you, you are listening, God. Hear the cries and the call of your people today. Open blinded eyes so that we can see you at work. Remove the fear, give us faith. Remove the pettiness, give us power. Remove the world out of us, give us your word. Hallelujah, you said in your word, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say. Lord, we are waiting. Can't do nothing until you come. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Ghost. Come, healing power. Delivering power. Hey, hey, hey. Come. Saving power. Come, 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 Lord. Come and help us. Come and help us, God. We need your help. We know you're not finished with us. And Lord knows we're not finished with you. We need thee. A savior like you, Jesus. One who welcomes all to come. Hey, God, we love you today because you are an unchangeable savior. Bless your name. Praise your name. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. That you get rid of out of us. And every one of us is are included. If we're pretending, remove it. Help us to be real with you. So you can be real with us. So we can watch you work. For all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and for them that are called according to his purpose. And Lord, we know the church is called. We're the called out ones. That's what church means. We're the called out one. We're called according to your purpose. So work things for our good. It's in Jesus' name that we offer now all that we prayed unto you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. We're sending on down Lord, send it on down. Whoa, let your holy y'all better help you, brother. We'll send it on down. Oh, send it on down. Oh, Lord, let your holy ghost come on down. Send it on 
on down. Send it on down. Oh, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it down. Oh, send it on down. Oh, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. We can't live right till you send it on down. Oh, yeah. Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. Well, we can't live right until you send it all down. Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. We can't love right until you send it down. Lord, oh. let your Holy Ghost come on down. Well, we can't love right till we send it on down. Yeah. Send it down, send it on down, send it, send it on down, send your holy ghost, send it on down, send it down, send it on down, can't live right, send it on down, till you send it on down, can't pray right, send it on down, can't love right, send it on down, send it on down, send it on down, send it on down, send your power, on down. Send it, send it on down. Power, send, it on down. send your help, send it on down. Down. Send, it on down. send your heat, send it on down. deliverance, send it on down. Send, send, it. send it on down, 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 send it on down. Well, Lord, let your Holy Ghost. Come on down, well, send it on down, Lord, send it on down, yeah. Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. Praise the Lord. Can't do nothing. Can't live right. Can't do nothing. We can't even be Christians. We send that Holy Ghost. Don't be afraid of the power of the Lord. We need it now, you need it tomorrow, next day, you'll need it all week. Amen. Don't try to do things on your own. Can't be a Christian without three things. Without Jesus, without the Word, and without the Holy Spirit. Work on it. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Uh, we're going to end now. Remember, next Saturday at 10 o'clock, confirmation classes will begin for those uh, young people and anybody. If you've never been to a confirmation class before, uh, it's, it's a discovery of your faith. It's a discovery of your faith. And an affirmation is... Uh, Affirming what you discovered. Affirming what you discovered. I'm going to say it again now. Confirmation. If you've never been to one, it'll help you. It's a discovery of your faith. And then on April 8th, it will be the affirming of what you discovered. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all celebrate real good, Brother Harrison. And uh, and uh, to to Desi and uh, to Desi and Valerie Floyd. Amen. 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 Y'all y'all be blessed in the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank God for them. They've been counseled and and uh, they hook up real good and hook up right and. I'm going to be their spiritual father. They get out of line, I'm going to whip their behind. <laughs> Amen. They've been trained how to be husband and wife. I know that. Amen. Knock them in the eye. Amen. I want y'all to stay. Y'all going to stay together in the name of Jesus. They are proof. I know you got something to say. Go ahead. Well, you know it, but right on the money.
Good morning, church family. It's good to see all of you. Uh, on yesterday, uh, it was a little rainy, but um, the men came out and and we had a good fellowship. And I want to thank uh, Brother Pippa, Brother Green, Mr. Larkin, uh, that old fellow right there, <laughs> and everybody. It, 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 that was my first time pulling my grill out since Christmas. And, and, and the Lord bless us that, that we had a good time. We, we miss you, Rev. Yes, sir. Yes, but, sir. Uh, we'll let you slide this time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. And, and to the young couple back there, if you want to get 47 years, like we, like we, we have tomorrow, keep praying. Yes. Yes. Because the devil could be coming at you from your right and your left, in front and behind. Yes, sir. So just keep praying and um, be forgiven of each other and things will work out. Yes, sir. And to my sweetie sitting over there. Yes, indeed. Your potato pie, your potato pie. I go with apple. I'm, I'm I'm an apple pie man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to all of you, um, have a blessed day, and, and and may God bless all of you. Thank you, Brother Harrison. God bless you. Amen. Amen. To uh, thank you, sir, for that. To. Uh, to Mr. Pepper and to the men, you did a fantastic job as always. Thank God for you. I know we got to go, but you know we take time out to take time out. Amen. And thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, if we, you know, I put pepper on my food. Pepper make it better to me. So um, I, uh, I hope you don't get mad at me about that, but. Every now and again, you have to put some pepper on it. <laughs> so, Mr. Pepper does a wonderful job in leading our men group. Amen. So, thank you, sir, for your leadership and all this weekend. And I'm sorry I didn't get to come down here to eat up your food. I believe, I believe it. And uh, I'm always, you know, um, um, I'm an emergency preacher in my community. They call me, you know, and I'm always doing something up there. I told my wife the other day, I said, I'm thinking about moving to Orangeburg. And I need to talk to uh, Lamont Green and the trustee because I'm going to buy that house, that parsonage, from y'all. <laughs> so I'll have some place to stay when I come down here. Y'all ain't taking me serious, are you? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Y'all ain't like I'm serious. Y'all think. I'm <laughs> I, well, I am not serious. No, but my, my uh, I don't have an excuse, uh, Mr. Pepper and the rest of your brothers. I was at a, at a, I had to do, I'd be at a funeral yesterday, and then, uh, and then I had a cousin come over, and I, and uh, we were supposed to be spending some time together, and we keep missing each other, and so yesterday, you know, and one thing happened after another, and you know what? I said, you know, they're going to have to just be mad at me. I just can't make everything. But anyway, God bless you for your work. I got, I want to, um, I want to use your grill or whatever I need to use. Cause I'm a, I want to bless the church. I want to, I'm going to buy the fish now. But y'all had to get everything out. Okay, I'm serious about that. Yeah, you can believe me on that one. I'm, I'm serious about that. 
we're gonna we're gonna do that and i'm gonna you know y'all gonna have to help me i'm talking about help me do it all right i'm gonna provide the fish that's my love for y'all you don't like fish too bad amen <laughs> so anyway let's get out of here uh thank you musicians uh, thank you ushers uh, um, all of you all and uh, thank you mr pepper for your leadership today and and uh, the chorus did a wonderful job. Let us stand. Reach out and turn somebody. Make this world a better place. If you can reach.